the water just kept coming up my legs. That's how fast it was coming. Everybody in that area, nobody expected it to get as deep as what it did. We had already ordered body bags. We just knew because a lot of people weren't leaving their houses. We couldn't make them leave. We got caught in some current where it was coming up so fast. We were worried that we would even get out at that point. So I was praying a lot. They were letting us look at the building and when you walk into your room, and there's nothing there. On that Saturday night, I was working here, business as usual. It was uh, obviously raining quite a bit, but it never crossed my mind that there was ever going to be an issue for that. I had heard that water had never been in the building since 1956, so I felt pretty safe that the Corps engineers and the powers that be would, would continue to allow that to never happen again. And uh, that's how I ended my Saturday night. Went home, went to sleep, and never thought twice about it. We've, we had had uh, backwater that had cut us off in years past, and we had kind of been an island in years past, but it had never been in our house. I guess it was May the 1st, was that Saturday. It had been raining a lot, and the river was full, and it was coming up, and, and so we were trying to be prepared in case we got cut off from the front of our house, the, uh, down the backwater. We were moving things out. We had gotten some cars out and things of that nature. And Saturday night, uh, Don's oldest son, Kenny, called and said, Dad, the water is over Highway 70, over there where Tippecanoe and all the canoeing is. Uh, he says, it's over the road. It's over that bridge. So we felt like we were in trouble. It, you know, we had not known of that to happen before. Well, I mean, we didn't really expect it to flood. We were, we had been seeing on the news where parts of Nashville were flooding, but I didn't really think anything of it because I wasn't expecting anything in our area. So we just went to bed. Saturday evening, we were um, all day at the restaurant. Uh, we opened at 11 o'clock. We were cooking, very busy. Uh, it was rainy. Uh, you know, all day long, but it uh, kind of forced people inside, I, I guess, so to speak. But um, uh, we were cooking all day. We were not even expecting anything um, to happen. Um, so, uh, hadn't seen the news, hadn't heard any weather reports. So, I mean, right up until 8.30 when we closed the doors, uh, we weren't expecting anything. We just thought it's raining, you know. We, and we knew it would be uh, a record uh, flood if it did get to us so there just was no sense of urgency whatsoever on our parts um, so that's what we were doing cooking catfish all day long we closed at 8 30 so and then I went right into the the cleaning after you know like I said there was no sense of urgency whatsoever the rain had been falling for a while. We had been watching it because, you know, we are right here in Ashland City with the main river right beside of us. And the backflow comes in right in behind me here. And the creek, it kind of wraps around our property. So we've been watching it and it had been gradually coming up in the um, field back there. And we had heard, you know, speculations that it was going to get bad. So me and my husband, which is also on the Fair Association, we come down and we have big equipment. We have um, 
our big tractors, uh, our lawnmowers. We had just bought a, a brand new lawnmower, so we had brought them up here onto the pavilion, is, which is where I'm sitting at now. And because um, this area is in the pavilion on the 100 year flood map, um, it is not in the floodplain. So we thought, well, that will be the safest for our equipment. So we, we pulled it up here and then we went home and, you know, as normal with our families and stuff and didn't think nothing about it. On Saturday all day long we had had the kindergarten uh, roundup so we were here all day and it was pouring down rain. Several of the teachers were here working, working on their rooms and we, we left after the roundup. Decided we better come back because we heard a lot of the roads were being blocked. So we came back because one of our teacher friends was still here and she had no way to get home. We knew that her road was blocked so we uh, helped her get through to White Bluff so that she could go home and spend the night, go to somebody else's house to spend the night. I got a call Sunday morning probably about 1.32 o'clock from the highway department saying the water was coming up and we headed down there and sent the fire departments, EMS, law enforcement to start our normal areas, Chapmansburg, Lakeside Drive, Floyd Lane, those areas of evacuating people. That morning around 11.30, 12 o'clock, we had everybody out trying to get people, still get people out. Some people were reluctant to leave. Uh, the fire department, Ashland City Fire Department, uh, was out doing all they could do, and there was a call that came in 911 for a water rescue at the end of New Hope Road at the county line. And so the 911 director and I took my boat and went down there and met Pleasant View, and uh, we weren't able. The water was so swift; they were able to get to him finally with a smaller boat. But the water came up so quick, we had to leave my truck and the boat. We got cut off, so we had to go back the next day. Sycamore Creek, you know, came up quick and then it went down. So we were able to get it out the next day. Those two men were rescued and weren't injured. And from that day, from then on, you know, about two o'clock Sunday, we were wide open, activated in the EOC for the next, I guess, two weeks and it, it was extremely busy and you know the worst disaster our county and of course the state's ever had. Not blaming anybody but a lot of this had to do with water that was released in Nashville and we never got a call. We never got the first call uh, from the Corps of Engineers or anybody saying hey we're gonna have to let some water go. It just it was done and we found out the hard way. It was probably about 1.30, 2.30 in the morning when the volunteer fire department came around on our street, knock, they were knocking on doors waking everybody up to tell everybody that they needed to evacuate because the water was coming up. Um, and at that time we didn't have any water in our yard or carport, but by the time we left it was already probably up, not up to my knees, but there was, there was quite a bit of water in, our, in the carport already when we left. It was about four o'clock in the morning when we left because we had to get the kids up, pack a suitcase. We were expecting, you know, just have to stay maybe overnight or, you know, a day or two at a hotel till the water went back down. Um, so we didn't pack a whole lot because we weren't expecting to be gone that long. It wasn't even over our road yet, down on Cumberland Drive, and, and it wasn't over Matlock. When we got to the part where there's the, the creek crosses the road on either side of, Ch of uh, Chapman's Bear Road there, it had gotten pretty deep. We couldn't see the road anymore at that point. Um, and being four o'clock in the morning, it was pretty dark and there really wasn't any lights there. Uh, my husband said, looking in his rear view mirror, he said it was over my headlights. It rained all night. We got up on Sunday and uh, we got up real early and, and uh, on the, the other side of our house, we have a garage uh, now that uh, had not been there when we'd had high water before. And uh, so we knew that was a low area and that it would probably get into that garage. So we were trying to empty everything out of the garage and move a lot of things over into our basement because it had never been in our basement before. 
and uh, so that's what we were doing. We were running back and forth from the garage to the basement and the whole time that we're doing that, cars are leaving Sycamore Recreation Area down there at those houses and they're trying to get their vehicles out. We were, we were like probably four o'clock in the morning trying to get things out because I was really scared and I didn't want to lose all that over in the garage. We just kept moving things and the water just kept coming. It just kept raining and the next thing we know the water is up level to the top of this bank and and we just can't believe it because it's never been in our basement before. We called the rescue squad, we called the boat and they came back and they picked us up and that's how we left on Sunday. That was right at 12 noon that we left our house. Sunday morning uh, my buffet cook Suter Bala, who is our kitchen manager now, still 10 years later, um, she called me at 6.30 in the morning and said I probably needed to come up here and, and look at the river. Uh, so we had a conversation about the river level. We have stairs going up and I said how many stairs have been covered? At that time she said I think about four or five stairs are underwater. Um, so I was like okay, no big deal. Um, when the water gets about halfway up the bank, call me back. I still wasn't very concerned, other than I knew we were probably going to be pretty slow that Sunday because the amount of rain throughout Middle Tennessee was going to slow us down just because of normal business was not going to be normal. The next call came and she said there's only four steps left before it gets to the top of the hill. She called me back again 30 minutes later and said, I think we're gonna have to do something. The, the water's about out of the banks. And that's when I made the decision. I said, all right, put everything up. Uh, elevate everything in the restaurant that you can. Put the chairs on top of tables. Put everything in the restaurant high. In case we do get some water in, we might not lose everything. Well, the next morning we got up early and I said, we've got to go back to school. And we came in and it was already about an inch of clear water from our playgrounds. It had just stayed on the playgrounds and they'd come in all over the school and we were trying to squeezy it out. And the police came in and said, hey, you need to go move the bus. And my husband said, well, I've already moved it once. He said, no, you need to go move it. So we walked into the hallway and here goes a dumpster floating by in front of us. And we decided, hmm, looks like the flood's coming this way. So the water, instead of was leaving the playgrounds, but the river had come up and had backed up on the creek. And when it was coming up, and it was right at the sidewalk level. So we moved the bus again, and most of us picked up our stuff to leave. There were about six of us here trying to squeeze the school out. And as we went through, uh, it started getting to my ankles and then we walked a little bit further and it got up to my knees and we decided well this is kind of you know maybe we need to look outside and when we looked outside the water was about a foot taller on the outside than it was in the school we'd gotten through and it they it just started getting deeper and we realized we couldn't get out sunday morning i i got up i'm getting ready for church so I texted my brother, my brother David Cole and Dixon, um, and um, I said, hey Dave, you know, getting ready, we're about to come to church, and uh, he said, well, can you get out? And I said, well, yeah, sure, why wouldn't I be able to get out, you know? And he said, well, y'all have had a lot of rain, and there's some flooding going on down there. I said, oh, he said, you better go check. I don't think you're going to be able to make it. I looked, you know, I said, it is coming up the river bank. You can see it coming up the river bank. That's when we were panicked. I came outside and the water, you could just, you, we watched it. It was creeping up just like that. And it finally, it got up. My husband went and got his boat. You could just see it. It was gradually rising just like that. It went from the middle of the river bank all the way up to um, where that porch is um, by the time we got in the boat and we left. So, um, and we watched it and it was just starting to swirl. We put a few valuables in the boat. We had the clothes on our back. We got our three dogs and we got in his boat and we left. We got caught in some current where it was coming up so fast. Um, and um, I was 
praying that we would just make it out. He was able to get out of uh, the water where it was swirling so quickly and we finally got um, over enough that he could get us up to um, the road enough to pull us out. With all the destruction and all of the things that, that we lost, we had to throw away, that was damaged, uh, I never lost my faith. I always believed uh, in the good Lord. I didn't understand uh, how this was all going to turn out, but I, I knew that he was going to take care of us. You know, you don't ever know until you have something happen. Are you going to keep your faith or will your faith kind of go, whew? But um, fortunate enough, I, I, I was fine with all that. I knew he was going to take care of us. There were people from all over the world that have donated things for us. There were books, bulletin boards, furniture, you name it, media, that we could go through and all of us get, and there was something for all of us. And so Harpeth Middle became part of our home and Harpeth High. We had initially planned to open the restaurant back up and do carry out. And it just seemed like the more time that went, it just the sense of urgency to open this up wasn't there you know another year another winter went by and another year and then it just uh you know we got to thinking i think we're just going to focus on just the campground that'll be our business now and you just focus a hundred percent on education a lot of people's never been flooded didn't have flood insurance so that's another big thing how are people going to pay for this well some of them got grants or loans and then some of these faith-based organizations, as well as donations from the county, Middle Tennessee, wherever, got these people back in business with a home. And, and I think the Mennonites built several houses at no charge. Those things took place. Um, it was just great to see it.